some New Yorkers we want you to meet. So would you walk down in front of the panel, please? Well. How are you doing, Mrs. Reed? <laughs> All right, Mrs. Reed, now if you'll join us over here, as I think you probably know, on the basis of this rather quick look at you, which the panel has had, and the quick look that you've had at the panel, we give them one free guess as to what your line might be, and we always begin the free guesses with Miss Kilgallen. I think Mrs. Reed operates a motel. A motel, Mr. Allen. I think Mrs. Reed makes butterscotch. Miss Francis. I think Mrs. Reed runs a reducing parlor. Mr. Sir. I think she manufactures castanets. <laughs> no, I'm afraid not. Interesting answers, but none of them right. So we'll let our viewers at home have a further look at Mrs. Reed. At the same time, we'll tell them what her line is. Every time you get a no answer from the panel, why, we uh, rack up $5 here, 10 of these no's, and you have won the game. Mrs. Reed is self-employed. With that, let's begin the general questioning with um, Steve Allen. Hmm. <laughs> this reaction, she must play second base for the Dodgers. Is, it? <laughs> uh, is there a service of any kind connected with your work, Mrs. Yeah. Reed? <laughs> uh, might I ever come to you for these services? I might. Uh, it evidently seems that uh, it might. Yeah, I you see. might. Well, that seems to amuse the audience. Would it? Uh, could it ever make me happy? Uh, <laughs> could. Uh, might it change me in any way? What do you mean by that, uh, Mr. Allen? What do you mean? What do I mean? <laughs> I mean? What do you mean by what I mean? You don't mean what you think you mean. Uh, would it uh, change me in any little way at all? <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes, I think so. It would. Uh, would it possibly change my appearance? <laughs> I assume from the audience reaction that changing people's appearance is not your primary function, is that right? <laughs> yes, that is not the primary function, no. Yes. <laughs> all right. Um, might what you do then uh, uh, change or affect people's health? Yes. It might, yes. Uh, hmm. Well, would this change, uh, whatever it is, be something that would be immediately apparent to my friends if... Uh... <laughs> Are you talking about the change... Are you talking about the change in health or the change in appearance or the change in what? Well, uh, I'm talking about the apparent change. The whatever. change in, a, in, a, in, in uh, apparent change. Well, wait, we'll have a small conference. Right. Have, a, have a big one. I have nothing on my mind. <laughs> <coughs> Off they go in the wild blue yonder. And now here they come back with the latest returns. Since we're somewhat confused about what it is you're trying to get at, we'll give you a qualified yes. Well, I'll just take a stab at it. Uh, might nearsighted people ever come to you? <laughs> Thanks a lot, and I wonder why. Uh, could what you do improve my eyesight at all? So one down and nine to go, Miss Francis. Do you uh, work outdoors at all, Mrs. Reed? Sometimes. Uh, is there uh, any gaiety or hilarity in any way connected with the kind of work you do? Do people feel very gay about the kind of job uh, you have? So it inspires gaiety in the audience. Would it inspire it in the people that might come to you? Well, I, I think I'd say this, and I think Mrs. agreed with me, that uh, Mrs. Reed would agree that in the process of her services, it's possible that there might be uh, the implementation of, of uh, some kind of games or things like that, which would, you know, I mean... Uh, <laughs> um, uh, does the... Uh, uh, do you ever touch the people you come into contact with? No. Not, not for the purposes of the service. That's two down and eight to go, Mr. Sir. Mrs. Reed, is there any kind of 
a liquid connected with what you do? No. No, not, not specifically. Not, not mm -hmm. at all. No, we all absorb a certain amount of water every day, but we'll set that down. That's three dollars of water. Go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, could women as well as men like Steve enjoy your services? Yes. <laughs> Might I ever become involved with what you do? Yes. Would it be more usual for grown-ups to seek your services or come in contact with you than children? Would it be, would it be more likely grown-ups than children? Yes, I would think yes. So, yeah. uh, Would both sexes ever be connected with you at the same time or connected with your services? Mm, yes, yes. You sometimes perform your services indoors? Yes. Do uh, more than one or two people at a time ever watch you do what you're doing? Mm, yes. Uh, is it customary for you to perform your services with, say, a group of uh, 10 or 20 people looking on? Yes. Could be. Yes. Are they... Do you, however, perform your services for one specific person at a time, even though others might be watching? No. No, I don't think so. That's four down and six to go, Mr. Allen. Uh, is there some, something physical in what you do? I mean, out of the ordinary, such as more than typewriting or something of that sort. No. No, I don't think so. Five down and five to go, Miss Francis. Uh, does your uh, place have any, or wherever you, it is you work, uh, would it have anything to do with a health resort of any kind? Does health really come into it in an important way? Yes. I think so. Yes. Uh, would people that are at your place go there, uh, at, would it be a seasonal kind of place? <laughs> I mean, would, they, would you do better business, let us say, in the spring or the summer than you might do in the winter. Yes. Yeah, I would think so. Winter, we could, I think, more or less rule out. Of, you know, if no. it was a severe winter, couldn't we? Yeah. Are the people that come to you dressed, uh, uh, uh... <laughs> Are the people that come to you hardly what you might say be dressed at all? <laughs> Are they not dressed at all? When they come, I mean, we got such a laugh out of the way they might be dressed that I thought maybe they might not be. <laughs> no, but actually not for me. I think we'd have to give you a yes. Well, do you have... Uh, Dorothy, I don't think you'd go. <laughs> I should... <laughs> I go with her, I tell you that. <laughs> well, do you operate some sort of a nudist colony? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, Mrs. Reed, I think, would accept that general classification, but she prefers the designation a nudist park. That's actually what she runs. A, a, a nudist colony is no longer polite. It's a nudist park resort. Oh, when you, you park, park, it's all right. It's an air park. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, Mrs. Reed, let's see. You did fairly well with the prizes, and may we thank you for being our guest in What's My Life. It was nice to meet you. <laughs> Goodbye. All right. And now, let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in the New York Journal American and papers coast to coast, and who has just returned from the coronation, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. And on my left, brilliant young gentleman, who I'm happy to be sitting next to again tonight, Mr. Steve Allen. Thank you, Dorothy. And uh, before we turn to my left, Dorothy, I'm very sure that the ladies would be very thrilled to get a good look at your gown. It's a bit of an unusual procedure. Why don't you stand up for just a moment? This is uh, Dorothy's actual... It's her actual coronation uh, dress. Is that right, Dorothy? That's right. It's, uh, it's made of silver lame cloth, and it has almost... Oh, Millions and millions of pearls, anyway. How many thousand of pearls? Fourteen thousand. Wow. <laughs> and uh, Dorothy's taking off her Fort Knox right after the show, so... <laughs> 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 
move along now. On my left now, I'd like you to meet the charming young lady who is a member of the English What's My Line panel, Miss Barbara Kelly. Thank you.